Let's talk about games! your path to be We're not talking about Resident Evil today. <laughs> Hello guys, it's me, Bloody Jack from the Bloody Jack channel, and I hope you guys have had a wonderful spring. It's been a quite interesting spring, especially for the UK. I know I haven't made another video in months and months and months, but trust me, this is definitely going to be me coming back. Because I've had a lot happened, I recently got a new job, my 21st birthday has just happened, certain people in my life have taken up some time, well taken up some of my time, but now I thought we'd go back to the channel. Um, so, I'm not talking about anime today, I'm not doing top favourite lists today, today we're talking about one of my all time favourite games, Oddworld. Okay, since, okay, back in March. When, yeah, back March 20th, 2021, we had a small little release come out on PlayStation and PC. Old World Soulstorm, the recent installment slash reimagining of the Old World franchise. And I thought it would be a good idea to talk about every single Old World game leading up to Soulstorm. So, this has been the first episode, being this will be the first of six total Oddworld games, because I will probably end up talking about Soulstorm at some point. This episode we're going to be talking about the first game of the series, Oddworld Abe's Odyssey. So, for those of you who don't know, Oddworld is a media franchise and a fictional universe created by the developers Oddworld Inhabitants, under the direction of Lorne Lanning. Uh, the series has been released on various platforms, such as the PlayStation, Xbox, PS3, Game Boy, Windows, Wii U, and Switch, and so on. Uh, throughout the game set in the Old World universe, you control a character who goes on a quest to defend Old World's eco like, ecosystem from endangerment from industrial corporations. So yeah, this being the first part of the series, we're going to talk about the first Old World game. And I'll be talking about the overview, plot, a little bit of trivia here and there, and the development of the actual game itself. So, the overview of Abe's Odyssey. Oddworld Abe's Odyssey is a cinematic platform game developed by Oddworld Inhabitants, and published then by GT Interactive. It was released on September 19th, 1997, for the PlayStation 1, the DOS, and Windows 95. Uh, the game was re then released in Japan under the new title Abagogo by SoftBank with the Japanese PC version following in 2001. Uh, a Game Boy port was made of Abe's Odyssey just under the title Oddworld Adventures, uh, developed by Sapphire Corporation and published by GT Interactive in 1998. But we're not talking about those ones. We're not talking, I'm not talking about the PC version specifically, or the shitty Game Boy ports. I'm talking about literally just like the main line of like the console ones. Uh, Abe's Odyssey is the first part of the five planned um, games in the Oddworld Quintology. A remake of Abe's Odyssey, titled Oddworld New and Tasty, was released by Just Add Water Limited, and released on digital download platforms in 2014 with um, physical copies following like so like soon on for the PS4, the Wii U and the PS Vita but then released 
in 2020 we had physical copies of um, Oddworld New and Tasty for the Nintendo Switch. Uh, and on December 3rd uh, to 2018, Sony released the PlayStation Classic Mini Console, which actually had Abe's Odyssey in the list of the 20 games that it came with. A little bit of trivia for you. Uh, the Japanese title, Abe Go Go, is actually a little reference to the Speed Racer anime series from the 1980s. So, the standard plot of Oddworld Abe's Odyssey. You control the titular Abe, who is a slave working at the meat processing plant Rupture Farms, where one night he just escapes by, because he eavesdropped on the fact that the CEOs and the board members are losing lots and lots of money because their livestock of meaches, paramites, and scrabs are just plummeting down with their revenue. So, the lead board member and the CEO of Rupture Farms, Mullock the Gluckin, has a plan to kill off some of their Madokan employees, creating Madokan Pops. So, with Abe figuring that out, he has to escape, take some of his friends along with him, and then goes on a spiritual journey, but then he has to come back and set free all the Madokans who are still there. So, more a little bit of trivia for you guys. Uh, the game actually spoofs the 1973 movie, um, Solid Green, where Abe, like just like the main character, Abe discovers that Rupture Farms' food products are actually made from his own race. <laughs> uh, the Madoc, well, that being the Madocans. So, gameplay side, yeah, gameplay-wise of the series. Abe's Odyssey is a 2D side-scrolling platformer in which you have to get gear where you have to guide Abe through numerous puzzles. Obstacles come in the forms of uh, mines, pits, electric barriers, and patrolling enemies like sligs, slogs, scrabs, and paramites. Uh, if Abe comes into contact with any of these though, it does mean an instant death, which is very very annoying and you will actually go back to your last checkpoint and those checkpoints are very far and few in between. Um, Although the player does have an infinite number of lives but so this won't actually result in a game over screen for any of it. Aside from navigating puzzles and obstacles, a major element in Abe's Odyssey is the rescuing of Abe's co-workers. Uh, the, all the enslaved Madokans that work within the factory, just as he did. Uh, Abe can talk to his friends using the game speak controls, which are very simple, just like hi, follow me, stop, wait, work, and so on. Uh, but you have to safely guide the Madokans through the obstacle course, and you can use Abe's normal chant to open a bird portal where the, your friends can just jump in through and are automatically set free. But that is not all. You, with the chanting, with Abe's chanting, you can also possess other enemies like the Slicks, who you can use to navigate through specific areas, or when you're done with them, you can just make them explode, <laughs> or use them to communicate with other Slicks. Uh, more bit of trivia as well. Uh, Abe's name was almost actually changed before the game's release. Uh, word got around Oddworld Inhabitants' offices that they were actually going to change the name to Monkfish. But after a post-it, yeah, after a passive-aggressive post-it note guerrilla campaign, several female office staff members actually put the um, they kept putting name uh, they kept putting notes saying Abe in big capital letters around the office. So eventually the um, developers actually gave in and gave him his name, gave Abe his name. So now we talked about some other bits, let's talk about the different endings. Now this is very infamous for all the Oddworld games, that each game has a different ending depending on what you actually do. Yeah, cause, so with Abe's Odyssey, the game really ends on depending on how many Madokans you've, well out of the 99 Madokans you have actually saved from Rupture Farms. If Abe rescues at least 50 Madokans or more, you get the good ending. 
uh, where the Madokans will all come together in a cutscene and Chance summoning a Thunderbolt to strike down on Moloch and his slick assistant just in time to save Abe. And then one of Abe's allies that you meet in the game, Big Face, and yes, yeah, that is his name, uh, Big Face appears and Chance and walks himself and Abe out of Rupture Farms onto a giant stage in front of all the Madokans that Abe has saved. And the, this ending is considered can like all good endings are considered canon in the Oddworld lore. And then the events of Oddworld Abe's Exodus would pick up directly after this has happened. Uh, if Abe has rescued less than 50 Madokans, you will get the bad ending. Where, a where you see in the opening cutscene where Abe is hanging over a meat grinder, well with the bad ending, the Madokans discuss if they should actually even bother saving Abe at all. Uh, then Big Face asks the opinions of a number of other Madokans, but ultimately decides that he's not worth saving, and they all allow Abe to fall into the meat grinder, where Moloch and his assistant actually laugh as Abe is chopped up into pieces. And then you get a message from the game saying that you've gone and done fucked up! <laughs> uh, but a little bit of fact here for you, depending if you get the version of it on Steam or if you still have the PS1 copy, if you rescue all 99 Madokins in the bonus part on the main menu, you can actually see the original promo trailer for Abe's Odyssey called Guardian Angel. And it is a little bit haunting here and there. <laughs> Just because life is doom, and everyone wants to eat you, there's no hope. You need to look with them. It's time to confess. Uh, more trivia for you guys as well, in case you don't know. Uh, the Scrab's barking noise is actually was once used in the 2010 movie um, Daybreakers. There you go, a little bit of facts. Uh, okay, so now let's talk about the development of Abe's Odyssey. Oddworld Abe's Odyssey began production in January 1995 under the name Soulstorm. After GT Interactive acquired publishing rights, the name was then changed to Epic but then later on was altered to Abe's Odyssey, well, Oddworld Abe's Odyssey. Uh, it had a private screening at E3 1996, and then it was publicly shown in E3 1997, with that being the version of the game closer to the final release. Uh, the first footage that Lorne Lanning ever saw of Abe's Odyssey involved a FMV cutscene of Meech's, a pack of Meech's chasing Abe. Uh, he was happy with the animation, but due to the disc space limitations of the PS1 at the time, uh, they were not able to include all species created for the Oddworld universe. So, thus, Meech's were cut. And in addition to this, a sequence after you, um, yeah, a sequence that concerned the moon Abe witnesses after his escape, after you've beaten the stockyards level. Um, was also cut because in that FMV cutscene. Uh, Lanny explains that it was originally accompanied by footage of meteorites impacting that moon creating the Madokan handprint. So it is implying that greater forces are behind this and are trying to guide Abe to the path of righteousness. Uh, but again due to um, little time, budget, uh, all those constraints, that had to be cut as well. Uh, Abe's Odyssey, though, was the first major GT title that the UK development team actually had been taken in by GT Interactive, following the criticism, well not the criticism, the, acqu the acquisitions, or accusations, or whatever you want to call them, by of Warner Interactive, who were at the time hitting it big with the first two Crash Bandicoot games at this point. Um... <clears throat> Yeah, became involved with. Uh, due to the lack of testing, though, the final version of the game did have a fair amount of its own glitches. 
Now this wasn't a Cyberpunk 2077 kind of thing where everyone just bitched and whined about it. These glitches are just like any other glitches and bugs that you just happen to find by pure coincidence. Uh, like one of the glitches being the uh, the stop and turn glitch where Abe can actually skip certain levels, very much the famous one from Metal Gear Solid or Portal 2. And there was another glitch, I can't remember what it was called, uh, I think it's the invisibility glitch, or the, it's either invisibility or invincibility, where Abe can actually go behind the screen and you can just carry on going. Um, so, however though, these glitches were also found in the remake, but then they were actually discovered and through several patch updates they were actually removed and fixed. Um, during development though, an executive at GT Interactive tried to actually sabotage the game's development because he didn't like the idea of this game being made. Um, his boss was shown footage and decided to fund it in the expense of the executive who tried who tried to decide to shut it down. Uh, Lanning then explained that during Odyssey's production, people in the video game industry were actually seen as just toy makers and not being taken very seriously. And thanks to Oddworld Abe's Odyssey, this actually changed a lot. And Abe kind at the time came be kind of an unofficial mascot for the PS1. And we thank it for that. But on December 4th, 2017, Oddworld Inhabitants announced that the source code for Abe's Odyssey, which was thought to have actually been lost long before, uh, was actually uncovered along with a box filled with loads of unseen artwork, which was also presumed lost. And Oddworld Inhabitants has confirmed that they do plan to do something with the source code and with the art, but with the lost art but nothing that we know thus far has actually been said. More trivia though, this is actually one of the first few games to actually feature the ability to kick the player on the main, to the menu screen if you actually remain in, the, in an idle animation for way too long. Okay, now that we talked about the development, let's talk about the Japanese version of the game. An alternate version of the game was actually released in Japan, while the storyline remained completely unaltered uh, the packaging of the game and the designs of the characters differed actually from the original version. With like one of the changes, for example, uh, being the removal of a single finger on a Madokan hand. Because in all other ver in most versions of an old world game, Madokans have four finger, well, three fingers and a thumb. Whereas in Japan this was actually seen as a little bit offensive due to actual meat packers that have a job in that like work in Japan, most of them would be seen as uh, they would be seen with a missing finger on their hand. So this caused a little bit of a riot. So to fix this, they actually just removed a finger entirely for uh, the Madokans. Hence, why in some other Oddworld games you'll actually just see Abe with two fingers and a thumb on each hand, which makes more sense. A uh, more bit of trivia though, uh, not only this thing for Abe was actually a major design change, but the symbol, or the logo for Madokan Pops was also changed, because in the, well in other versions of it around the world it was just a decapitated Madokan head put on a spike, whereas in the Japanese version and future versions of this game, it was just a normal popsicle with Madokan's eyes on it. And that logo has actually been used in future Oddworld games, including the remake. Now we got everything else sort out of the way, my thoughts and opinions towards Oddworld Abe's Odyssey. Abe's Odyssey is a great platformer with a nice and simple storyline that's easy for you to follow. Uh, the controls are aged somewhat okay. <laughs> Uh, I highly recommend that you pick it up though, if you find a second hand copy of it for the PS1, definitely get it, or even better, get the Odd World Odd Box Collection, which you can get on Steam for a very cheap, I think you can get it for like £10 on Steam, or $10 if you live in America, 
But yeah, it's a pretty cheap and fair price, and it does have most of the Old World games in there, aside from the remakes. So, yeah, those were my thoughts and opinions on Old World Abe's Odyssey. And hopefully, if this goes well, I'll end up talking about the other Old World games in the series. So, like, comment, subscribe, share on your social media, follow me on my other social medias, follow my Facebook page, my Instagram page, my Twitter page. Follow me on Twitch as well, because soon I'm going to be live streaming again, hopefully. Very soon. Uh, but every week I'll be live streaming a different game. Uh, I ain't got anything else to add, like, add to it. Uh, hopefully, if this all goes well, I'll talk about other Old World games, and I'll do. I'll be doing more retrospectives. Yeah, I'll be doing retrospectives on other video game franchises as well. So, see you guys in the next one.